On this video, we are going to go over the basic steps to create your first HTTP server using PHPSwap. We will go over uh, the information of uh, how to create a web server with uh, PHPSwap. After that, we are going to understand how to uh, grab uh, query parameters from the browser so you can use dynamic data coming from there and then we are going to see what is different from PHP Swole and the normal approach with a separate web server using PHP FPM. So let's get to it. To begin with, what we need to create a server with Swole is we need an index file. So uh, as you can see, I already have it here. So here is, here is my file. And to create a server uh, with HTTP Swole, First, I'm going to put here the namespaces that I'm going to use, which is basically the request object, the response object, and the server object. The server object is the first one that I will use, and that is used for me to instantiate the server. So I create an instance, and at this point, the server is not available yet. Uh, the second step is I'm going to put the, uh, a callback to the start event. So, uh, and, and here is the first difference between PHP Swole and the normal PHP FPM. PHP Swole works through callbacks, so uh, it keeps running uh, in the, uh, it, this application here keeps running. So whenever you execute it on your terminal, it will stay running until you actually kill the server. So the way for you to use this in production, for example, is to run this as a daemon in your server. So it keeps running and then the server stays available. And as in this example here, uh, this will run, this will be exposed on the port 8003. And this here means that it's going to be available to anybody. If you want to be a, this to be available only on localhost, you can use localhost uh, IP 127.0.0.1. So let's add a callback to the start event. So I see on the terminal when the server actually gets available. And here it is. And now we have, we need, uh, this here is not required, but it's recommended. So you, you get uh, control over the start event and can do something when this happens. Uh, what is re actually required is the, a callback to the request event. And the callback to the request event can be done like this. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm adding a function, a uh, nameless function, uh, a closure to the request event and I'm passing as a parameter uh, the request and the response objects. So this here is going to be all I need uh, to have a response for every request and then the only ex uh, extra detail left out is to actually start the server. So this is all I need and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to write hello world and this is going to be all I need for the server to start working. So let's see this happening. So if I go here and run the server and bring my browser window here and access the server, I'm going to see hello world. So this is the first very initial version of the HTTP server running. Now, uh, you have to pay attention in the next step, which is there's a basic difference between using HTTP server on SWOL and on normal frameworks out there uh, used by the majority of the community like Laravel Symfony, which is usually the PHP community frameworks, they, they follow PSR standards and SWOL is not uh, a framework to be used like that yet. So you need like something to wrap a SWOL instance, server instance for you to use like that. What I mean is, uh, as an example, the request object is not going to be in the same format as a request object on Laravel or Symfony, as an example. The request object here uh, will be in a very raw format. You'll have access to all the data is complete, but you, don't, you won't have access to, to the data in the same interface that you have access there. So here, for example, if I want to get a query string, which is the parameter passed in the URL, uh, let's add like a condition here. First of all, I'm going to add uh, an empty parameters variable. And then what I'm going to 
do is I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to grab in, this, in the class object, the server or instance, and then I'm going to grab as array, the query string. And after that, what I'm doing is I'm using uh, a vanilla PHP function called parse str in that uh, string, in that, that, in that like uh, parameter, which is a query string, and I'm putting all inside this variable params that I just created right here. And with that, uh, I'm going to check if there is a key uh, called name, as an example. So let's put here. And if there is, I'm going to put uh, a user uh, variable that I can put empty right for now, or put old for now. And and if, if there is this variable, I'm going to write whatever there is there, but if there isn't, I'm going to write world. So let's put it here real quick and see what happens. So there, that done, I'm going to restart the server, which has to be done every time. And then I'm going to refresh and I'm, I'm writing world. But if I go here and write, sorry, I'm going to see sub written. So this is what I'm, what's happening here. I'm grabbing the query string parameter and I'm parsing it and, and then like I check if there is a name parameter, if there is, I update the user variable. So let's see now the next concern, which actually is the last concern, which is uh, when you, you, you're running a server on a PHP FPM, every request is fresh new. You reinstantiate everything, you build up your application again, you bootstrap your application, Execute, process that request, and finish everything. You clear the memory. On, on Swole, on the other hand, it doesn't work like that. It's a reactor server. If you want to, to know more, uh, you can search. It's very easy to find information about reactor architecture. Uh, and and it basically, it, it loads your application, you bootstrap your application, and put the instance with everything loaded in your memory. And once you have that loaded in your memory, it keeps uh, executing the callbacks as soon as the events are thrown. So what we have here is that your all everything that happens here at before in the global state in the global scope, uh, it happens during the bootstrap and it doesn't happen anymore. So further requests will only execute whatever is here and reuse the variables that are available in the global scope. So for example, let's put this variable here in the global scope. And let's invoke this instance and pass by reference so I make sure that that instance that I'm using is that instance in the global scope. Uh, if I don't use, every time I, I run the request, I'm going to grab uh, the same value. But if I pass the reference, reference, if I update the value here, I also update in the other scope that I'm passing. So I want to do this because I want to show uh, the concern that you have to Pay attention when working with SUO. So here I'm passing by reference, and if I don't pass any parameter, I'm going to be seeing a world. But if I pass, I'm going to see that variable, that variable. And now in this situation here, because uh, the variable is in the global scope, uh, in, if in one request I I pass the name Sabio, and in the other request I pass the name Marcio. Uh, everybody in further requests, if they don't pass any name parameter, they're going to be the same value, see the same value. So let's see it there. And if I, here, I, uh, if I don't pass anything, I'm going to see world, but I, and then I go here and I pass Marcio. And then if I remove and pass nothing again, I see Marcio. I can refresh, I will keep seeing Marcio. Why? It's because I updated the global scope. But if I refresh the server, I'm going to see world again. This happens because Swole loads the state and keeps and keep the application there. So this is something to pay attention. So is the recommendation is always pay attention in the variables and, and the state of your application and to avoid data leaking. And that's it. Now you know the basic concerns of creating a uh, HTTP server using Swole and you're ready to start on that path.